That was an airplane taking off. Hello everybody, I am Mika Seppele. In this presentation I discuss methods to compute the speed of an object if the position is known and uh, methods to compute slopes of lines tangent to the graph of a given function at various points. The main mathematical object that we discuss is called the derivative. It allows us to compute speeds and slopes of tangent lines. The graphics on this page shows first on the left the graph of a function, one of its secant lines and a tangent line. And on the right one sees a tachometer and a speedometer of a car. What do these two graphics have in common? The answer is the derivative. The slope of the tangent line is computed as being the derivative of the function at the point of tangency and the speedometer is the derivative of the tachometer. Let us first concentrate on the problem of finding the slope of the line tangent to a graph of a given function at a given point. The graph in question is shown here and the point is indicated, it is the point x. We wish to find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of this function at uh, x f at x. We start by drawing a secant line that intersects this graph at two or more points. The two intersection points are indicated here. The first intersection point is the point x f at x and the second one is on the right. Then we let this secant line rotate around the point x f at x until it becomes a tangent line. So we take a limiting process of the slopes of the secant lines and we get to the slope of the tangent line. So our desire is to compute the slope of the blue tangent line. And in order to do that we start with this secant line indicated here and uh, we have uh, intersection points at x f at x and at some other point x plus h f at x plus h. So these are the two points at which the red secant line intersects the graph of f. In order to compute the slope of the red secant line we draw the right angle triangle shown here in this picture now. The vertical cathete of this right angle triangle has the length f at x plus h minus f at x and the horizontal cathete has the length h. This means that the slope of the red secant line is f at x plus h minus f at x divided by h. This is also called the rate of change of f at uh, x. So the blue tangent line is the limit of these secant lines as the right intersection point approaches the left intersection point. That is the slope of the blue tangent line is the limit of the slopes of the red secant lines as h goes to zero. So the slope is limit as h goes to zero of f at x plus h minus f at x divided by h. The limit of the quantity f at x plus h minus f at x divided by h as h goes to zero is called the derivative of the function f at the point x. We use the notations f prime at x, that's the first leftmost notation for the derivative, it is red f prime, or we also may write capital D applied to f applied to x, or capital D applied to f of x. All these notations mean the derivative of the function f at x. There are other notations too, they will be introduced later. The line tangent to the graph of a function f at the point x0, f at x0, is the line passing through this point and having the slope 
f prime at x zero and then we of course assume that this limit exists and is finite situations where functions have no derivative are points where the functions do not have a unique tangent line so here this point a is one such example the graph of the function f at the point a f at a does not have a unique tangent line because we may draw several different lines which are all tangents to the graph of f at that particular point. So in this case we have no derivative at the point x equals a but this function f does have derivatives at other points. The derivative is a very useful concept when we have to study the behavior of functions. Here we see the graph of a function which function has derivatives everywhere. If the derivative is positive, it means that the slope of the line tangent to the graph of this function is positive, that is such a tangent line is increasing, and it also means that the function itself is increasing near that point. If the derivative takes a value zero, then we know that the slope of the tangent line is zero, that is, the line tangent to the graph of f is horizontal, like the blue tangent line shown here. At such points, the function may have an extreme value. If the derivative is negative, then the tangent line points down, and the function is decreasing near such a point. The derivative of the function x squared at x equals 1 is easy to compute by the definition. It is a limit, as h goes to 0, of the quantity 1 plus h squared minus 1 squared divided by h. We expand the numerator, we get 1 plus 2 times h plus h squared minus 1 squared, and that divided by h. In the numerator, 1 and negative 1 squared cancel out, because 1 squared is simply 1. So we really have a limit as h goes to 0 of the quantity 2 times h plus h squared divided by h. h cancels out, and this is limit as h goes to 0 of 2 plus h. And we conclude that this limit is 2, and we conclude that the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function x squared at the point 1, 1 is 2. And this means that the equation for the tangent line is y minus 1 equals 2 times x minus 1. From this we get y equals 2 times x minus 1. So this is the line tangent to the graph of this function y equals x squared at the point 1, 1. Here this picture shows the graph of the function and that of the tangent line. Between negative 1 and 2, the tangent line gives um, only a vague idea of what the function does for positive values of x, but fails to approximate the function for negative values of x. If we zoom in too close to the point 1, here we see the graph of the function, that's the blue curve, and that of the tangent line for x from point 1 to 1.5, and here we see the same graph for x between 0 0.77 and 1.27, and finally here we see the same graph graphs between 0 0.9 and 1.1. The conclusion that we make out of all these three graphs that we now see on this page is that as we zoom into near the point of tangency, the tangent line approximates the graph of the function very well. The closer we are the point of the tangency, the better the, the approximation is. In the picture on the right, we cannot anymore make big distinction between the graph of the function and that of the tangent line, given the resolution of this picture. So the point is that near the point of tangency, the tangent line approximates the graph of the function well. One could say, should say, very well. Let us next turn to the problem of trying to figure out the speed of a moving object 
when we know the position of the object. So we assume that uh, the function f, which depends on the time variable t, gives uh, the distance, now in kilometers, a train has traveled in time t. Here we see a very fast train. This is the fastest train in the world. It's a train that um, goes from the city of Shanghai to the airport of Shanghai. In this picture you see it leaving the airport of Shanghai. This very fast train does not have wheels. It levitates on magnetic field. And uh, it reaches the top speed of 501 kilometers an hour, so 311 miles per hour. It is faster than any ordinary car. So now if f of t gives the distance in kilometers that this train has traveled in time t, then during the time interval from t0 to t0 plus h, the distance this train has traveled is f at t0 plus h minus f at t0 kilometers. And average speed during this time interval from t0 to t0 plus h is therefore f at t0 plus h minus f at t0 divided by h. And this speed at time t0 is the limit of this average speed as h goes to 0. So you see, this is the derivative of the function f. So we conclude that the speedometer is the derivative of the tachometer. Here we see in this picture the tachometer of a car that shows how many miles or kilometers the car has traveled together with the speedometer that shows the speed in miles per hour or kilometers in an hour. So speedometer, the speed, is the derivative of the distance traveled in a given time t. To summarize this discussion, we now observe that the central method in calculus is that of computation of limits. This has many applications. We have seen two of them here now. The first one was the computation of the line tangent to the graph of a function at a given point. So this uh, slope of the tangent line can be computed as a limit of slopes of secant lines. Then we may optimize business strategies by applying differentiation to mathematical models of the revenue. That is, we may, we may compute derivatives of the model for the revenue with respect to parameters and try to figure out where or for which values of the parameters this revenue is the largest. Then we may compute speeds of objects as limits of average speeds over short intervals. So the speedometer is the derivative of the tachometer.